This video is sponsored by Unscripted, the posing app for photographers. Today I'm talking to you about the five traps that wedding photographers fall into. Welcome to the studio. This almost, it feels like a summer day. It's not a summer day. I'm Taylor Jackson. I'm a wedding photographer slash travel content creator from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I, on a normal year, I photograph about 60 weddings as well as we do a lot of unique and interesting activities throughout the winter. Um, this year, I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. That's my, that's my list of exciting things happening this year. Uh, also on that list, the Fuji GFX 100S. I've discovered that camera manufacturers don't really love it whenever their lens hoods are on backwards um, in videos. It can be not in the shot. They just don't like it backwards. No lens caps either. Big camera. Excited for this. A project that may or may not fall apart. Depending on the local situation in uh, British Columbia, where we're going to be doing some high megapixel photography of mountain ranges to actually scout tenure for a heli ski operation. Um, so that's why I have this, but I don't know if that trip will actually happen. So uh, if it doesn't, don't hold me to it. It's a cool camera though. I'm excited to talk to you about it on the internet at another time. Today though, the five traps that wedding photographers fall into. The first one, fountains. No, I'm kidding. But fountains are a, a real concern. You know when the fountain's at the, the back of the aisle and you're walking backwards with the couple coming towards you and you fall into the fountain? I haven't done it, but I've seen it done on the internet. My actual tips here on my phone. The first point is to talk about my haircut. We already talked about that. The second point is gear. And I feel like it's an appropriate time to drop gear lust. Gear lust, gear lust. Gear lust, gear lust. I'm not sure if that was enough time with gear lust. I've got glass, but it's not in the cupboard. Full kit, every focal length is covered. New lens, bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. You can search for that on my channel if you want, if you want to hear the full song. We went to LA, we filmed a bunch of really proper music videos, and then we shot that one on a cell phone, and that one ended up being the, the one that went over the best in the, in, the, in the YouTube universe. The first trap is gear. Why that is a trap, uh, I definitely 100% fell into this when I was first getting started. I was like, oh, like Jose Villa. He shoots a, I don't know what he shoots now, but he was, I think he was shooting like a Contax 645 or something. And I was like, yeah, I do need that camera. And then I looked at prices. I'm like, maybe I'd, I don't need that camera, but what's his digital body? Maybe I'll shoot with that. I'm very influenced. And I feel like a lot of us are, have the tendency to be influenced by the people that we look up to and whatever camera they're shooting. Um, sorry if you're a follower of the channel and I literally shoot every single camera and I constantly leave you in confusion and limbo of what to purchase next. Um, I enjoy, I, I don't know, it's one of the perks of running a YouTube channel is that you can actually reach out to companies and have access to gear and equipment without having to put your money on the line. But I always tell you that the cameras and the things that I actually have purchased with my own money or the things that I have borrowed from them and actually purchased myself, um, which is a pretty short list. We'll, we'll do that another day. Maybe put a note in the comments below if you want a, a new gear video as of 2021 um, because my gear has definitely changed. I think my last gear video was maybe I was on a D850 and a D750 or D780 or something. Um, things have changed a little bit to say the very least. Why gear is a trap though is because you don't really need a whole lot. If I was still shooting my Nikon D700 from what year did that come out? 2007, 2008? If I was still shooting that camera with an 85 1.8D, I would be pretty happy. As soon as I, it gets dark, it gets a little more challenging, but out in normal daylight conditions, if I was doing an engagement session, I actually did a video with it last year. Um, and I am, again, still super happy with the images. It's a wide turn. We have a pretty treacherous intersection right here and it's the downtown street to a side street and trucks usually can't make that turn. I would be very happy with my Nikon D700 to shoot a wedding in good lighting conditions. Um, that said, that's a pretty extreme example. Um, what I would be currently comfortable with as a photographer only, and maybe speaking to you, if you're only a photographer and you're not yet doing video coverage, which I do recommend, and if you're interested in learning how to do a highlight film and you're a photographer, come on over to taylorjacksoncourses.com. I got a course for you. It'll teach you everything you need to know about building a highlight film as a photographer. But if at the current moment you're doing photography only coverage, or even if you want to be doing video, um, to give an example of what I would currently be totally happy and comfortable using, an Nikon D750, that came out in, I'm gonna say 2017, um, with an 85 and a 35 millimeter lens. I would be very, very happy with that setup. It has two card slots, which is kind of my, my checkbox there, uh, as well as good high ISO performance. And then also somewhere in the 20 to 30 megapixel range um, that I'm super happy with. So don't think that you need the latest and greatest, and also don't think that you need to be shooting with the equipment that you're, the people that you're looking 
taken up to or shooting because it really isn't that necessary. Um, what is, I guess, more necessary, we'll talk about this a little bit in the next few points here, but it is really what you create with it. And I know that sounds cliche, but it's 100% true. Um, here is point number two, and it might be an unpopular opinion. You don't have to be different to actually be successful in the industry. Um, I know that if you're watching a lot of small business videos, they're gonna hit you with like the, you need to know your unique selling proposition and you need to know all of these things about your business and how you're different than your competition and how to write it into your copy. And quite honestly, you don't really need that. At the end of the day, what you need is a social presence out there in the internet that establishes trust with your ideal client and makes them understand that you're someone that they, they would be happy to hang out with on their wedding day, you do good work and they trust you to show up. And if you can tick those boxes, you don't need to be offering like a black and white package where you only shoot black and white photography or like weird albums or metal prints or whatever. Um, you don't need that stuff to be a successful wedding photographer. They're nice to have, so you can definitely sell them. But as a core piece of your business, you don't really need a unique selling proposition in this industry. Um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about trust and building trust online, um, I would say pretty much the entire Book More Weddings 2021 course that's over on my courses page is all about that. Um, that was my big focus. Basically what happened was this past year, everything has switched to digital, um, or at least in Canada here, a lot has switched to digital that I'm doing very few in-person meetings now. It is now more important than ever before to have that digital storefront that really showcases your personality and, and really shows the world who you are because there's a pretty good chance that at least in my case, a lot of my couples, um, if I didn't meet them in maybe 2019 and they've been they've been bumping their wedding, there's a pretty good chance that I'm meeting all of my couples for the first time, either at their engagement session or at their actual wedding day this year. So establishing trust is key and Book More Weddings 2021 goes totally, completely into that. Number three, overthinking web and social presence rather than getting out and just creating. This was a huge one for me. Uh, as I, my background, I went to school for computer programming. So I learned the, the, the C sharp and the, the HTMLs and I built my own website and that was maybe the most, um, they talk about analysis paralysis where you're just like in the, like constantly just reading books and not actually executing on anything, just absorbing all this information. I felt that I was in some sort of digital paralysis developing my own site. Um, also I had a graphic design background. It was my first job ever when I was like 12 years old. And I was also designing all of my logos and all of my graphics and everything. And I feel like that delayed the start of my business or when it actually became successful by at least a year because I was like, why aren't people inquiring? I should redesign my website. Don't do that. Just get a website that, that looks good and spend your time actually creating the images and the hopefully video content that you would like to have on your website to showcase again, back to that, the trust that, that people need to have. They gotta like you, they gotta trust you. Um, maybe those aren't mutually exclusive. They have to for sure trust you, I think. They might not have to like you if you're just kind of, if you're in a small market and you're the best and they, they maybe they'll, they'll get over it. So get off of your computer and off of your cell phone or maybe be on them to, to contact people to set up content that you can be shooting. Um, with us as wedding photographers, it's, you're very much in kind of this weird limbo state in the beginning of your career where you just wanna get out and you're so hungry to go out and start shooting weddings, but nothing's really coming in. Um, so what I would be doing right now is I would balance that, the organic stuff that's coming in with stuff that I'm out there creating and actually executing and putting into motion. Um, that could mean style shoots, that could mean just offering up like shoots to your friends and family or that person that you saw on Instagram that looks like they have great style. Um, at the end of the day, as wedding photographers, our portfolio is created by our clients for the most part. Um, it's what they wear, how they look, how they, for the most part, interact with each other. Um, that there are certain things that you can do to bridge the gap, but if people don't feel comfortable with each other and you're doing everything that you can, that's just not gonna make a great image at the end of the day. So it really does come down to your clients and the people that are actually in the images and the, the events that they design, uh, really more than your actual skill as a photographer, which might be a bit of a weird thing, but hopefully that, maybe that sparks something that your portfolio is really just a reflection of the clients that you're booking and the closer you can get to your dream portfolio and the portfolio that you want to have the quicker that that's going to start self-generating that people are going to see that and be like oh that's exactly my vision for my wedding I should get in contact and once you can kind of get into that circle you're in a very good place before that circle you're, you're kind of sometimes you bump your head against the wall sometimes you book some free weddings on Craigslist that you don't you don't get mugged but you almost get mugged at them it's a story for another time Number four is that you will be full-time or pretty much full-time as a wedding photographer within a year. 
As I mentioned before, it is a slow building process. That it is by no means a race that every success you see is not an overnight success, even if these photographers appear to have come out of nowhere. There's a pretty good chance it was a three to five year success that actually took them to that point. Uh, kind of like a duck, or me maybe. I, I can be the example here. You don't know how fast I'm running under the table right now, because I look calm and collected. Maybe not that calm and collected. Kind of like a duck though, right? With the, the, the feet under the water. You don't really have full visibility on how much someone is trying and or how much they're actually spending in advertising and everything like that. Um, but that said, you can kind of have a little bit of a, Facebook makes everything public enough now uh, that you can actually have a pretty good idea of what people are doing. Um, nothing is really that hidden in the wedding photography industry that if you're looking at somebody and they're doing a great job and they're, they're booking a lot of work, what they're doing is probably out there on the internet for you to see and for you to consume. Uh, I would suggest looking outside of your immediate area and looking at maybe some larger cities that are nearby that are similar markets but aren't 100%. You're not just gonna be emulating exactly what someone else is doing. Pull bits and pieces from this YouTube channel that really make sense to you to include in your business. Um, maybe an additional point, this is the, the point 4.5. The business that you begin to grow and that you think that you're on trajectory to create sometimes doesn't end up being the business that actually makes you the happiest or the most successful um, that you do, especially now, like my over the past year with a little bit of decline in weddings or a significant decline in weddings, at least in Canada here, uh, the commercial side of my business has really come up. Last year, I would have been looking at this year and being like, okay, like this is a full other wedding year. I do not have to take any other work whatsoever. But being fluid and being able to react to your local environment, um, at the end of the day, we are all solo entrepreneurs out there in the world that if you're copying exactly what I'm doing, you're not putting me out of work unless you live in the local area maybe. But if you see an opportunity, it's very important to just capitalize on that. If it's something that again, makes you happy or if the financial stability makes you happy or whatever it might be, I, I feel like it, if you're just chasing money, it's going to be a very frustrating life for you in the wedding photography space, but if you're chasing some sort of money and also happiness simultaneously, you can always find a balance there, and that balance is different every single year. Um, but I'm happy to say that after, <laughs> after a short 15 years in the industry, I am a pretty happy wedding photographer. Uh, I would say that it won't take you that long, that it's maybe, I would say from the year three to five, you can really refine what makes you happiest in business and create the business that actually does make all of your wildest dreams come true. Um, my business was all circled around the fact that I wanted to be somewhat location independent. Um, I looked up to all the photographers that just kind of traveled the world all the time um, and maybe didn't even have a physical address like Elia Licardi. And strangely enough, that's what I kind of modeled my wedding photography business after, as well as outsourcing everything that we'll, we'll talk about outsourcing at another time. That's a full video on its own, but everything that I kind of put into place was to enable me to be location independent. Um, but that didn't necessarily mean that I wanted to, to go live in Mexico for a year and, and photograph weddings illegally in Mexico because you can't get a work permit. And if anyone's ever said that they're working legally in another country, they are probably incorrect and they're working illegally in that country. But my location independence was more so that I didn't want to be tied to a desk like this every day. This is a nice studio, but I wouldn't want to be here nine to five every single day. Um, so my location independence is location independence within here, or maybe this winter on a snowboard hill or in the back country. And again, that balance changes every single year. To get back to point number four, what was it, I've lost it. You'll be full time within a year. Success is easy, no it's not. There's no substitute for hard work. Um, Grant Cardone is actually somebody, I, uh, if you were at WPPI last year, uh, you probably saw a lot of people walking around with their, their Grant Cardone 10X hats. And 10X, He's a pretty, I would say, over the top individual. Um, one thing that I do respect of his is that basically his, his mantra is that you have to work 10 times harder than everyone else in order to be successful. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that if somebody's putting in a 40 hour work week that you're gonna have to put in 400 hours, but to work smarter and harder and to work just like to be more focused all of the time on the outcomes that you'd like to achieve. Um, you can always do them in smarter ways that don't involve spending additional hours just doing unnecessary things like making your new website and making your new logo over and over again because you can do the computer programmings. Um, so I think that there is value in that. And if you're looking at anyone as an instant success or somebody that just popped up and was like, whoa, like this person's amazing, look back, they're probably, they've been doing it and struggling for many, many years. Um, so hopefully that, that brings some sort of comfort uh, to, to your heart today. That was, that was dumb. Last one, point number five. I don't know if this is a trap. This is kind of um, a mental game that you have to play. 
Um, that fast growth is addicting, that in the wedding photography game, there are a lot of large payments that you can have a very, very good month and you can be over the moon and then book nothing for three months. And I actually learned how to balance my mental state in Las Vegas at the craps table. And I know that might sound like a bit of a ridiculous analogy that like, hey, like I learned to be more okay in my actual entrepreneur life by doing frivolous gambling that really I'm always at a disadvantage. I feel like at the most part in the beginning, you're always at a disadvantage in entrepreneurship as well. But what I learned was how to remove emotion from a lot of those transactions that to know that like this is a calculated move and I will place no emotion on that, whether that wins or loses. Or in some cases, if you do make the correct bet and you lose, to not take that as a, that's gonna lose every single time, that was the correct thing to do at that time and to be okay with that and to have some sort of weird redeeming quality within that. In business, um, my, my friend Michael Litt, who is a CEO of a company called Vidyard, go, go download Vidyard products and, and buy, buy their things. What Michael said in a video that, I don't even know if it came out, we film a lot of, sorry Michael, we film a lot of things that just don't ever make it to a place. They'll, they'll come out eventually. Um, what he spoke to was the fact that business is kind of this, this waveform where you have these huge depressions and also these amazing high points. And if you work for somebody else, those, those highs and lows are kind of clipped. So like the, the business high doesn't really extend to all employees. When you're the solo business owner, you, you get the full experience. You get all the highs and all the lows. And if you let the lows affect you too much and they really get into your emotional state, it, they will have a, a dramatic impact on your life. If you can emotionally separate yourself from the lows of your business and also the high points too, that it's it's nice to celebrate the high points, but by no like don't spend an entire year celebrating the fact that you booked Red Bull as a client one single time. Um, that that's something to get excited about and then kind of just chill out about it a little bit. So that's how I have found my balance within being an entrepreneur in, in specifically the wedding photography space that is a lot of very high, large payments and typically pretty profit heavy payments as well that when you're booking a wedding that you do have some back end costs but if you book 10 additional weddings next year that is pretty much kind of all profit for you. So um, I think there is some emotional um, preparation that goes into that or if you are along on that journey, um, some emotional work throughout that to not let those highs affect you too much to also mitigate a little bit of the lows. Hopefully that made sense to you. Today's video, sponsored by Unscripted. Unscripted is a posing app. I have that app right here on my phone. And you hit this app and it loads you up into a bunch of poses for couples or really anything. There's, there's a lot of different options in here. Groups, boudoir, people and pets. I spend a lot of my time in the couples and engagements and the weddings side of thing. Up here you have all kinds of different situations as well as down here there's just lots and lots and lots and lots of prompts. Um, and when you actually go into one of those prompts, uh, you get the direction as well as the prompt suggestion. Um, what I found the most valuable is if you want to do a photo like this, you just simply show them a photo like this. It's way easier than trying to describe like, hey, I want you to hold hands across and you guys face each other. But if you just show them like, hey, I'd like to do something like this right here, it's a lot easier for them to get into that pose. So if you're interested in really upping your posing game, uh, download Unscripted. Uh, I will be telling you more on this channel about different features within the app. That there's a lot to unpack within here, but the core of it, at least in the beginning, is definitely the poses that you have access to. Um, especially like myself, I was very nervous to ever get into to posing couples. There there was a bit of an age barrier as well that I was younger than a lot of my couples and as an introverted, quite shy individual and also being younger than my couples, it was very difficult for me to get people into poses and to really have, I, I felt like I had no authority in most situations uh, that I would be like, yeah, like let's go for a walk over there. Okay, now, now smile and, and look at me. Okay, I'm out of ideas, what should we do? And when you're asking your couples what to do, it's, it's kind of a bad situation. By having instant access to so many prompts and just ideas. It both relaxes my mind as well as my couples that if, if they're just not understanding what I'm asking and there's some sort of language barrier, I can just show them images. So head over to the link in the description below if you're interested in getting the app. That is all for today. Hope that you enjoyed today's video. And as I mentioned before, if you're interested in seeing my updated gear list, drop a comment or something in the an emoji, a taco emoji in the comments below. And I will know that, uh, that there's demand for that and I'll make a new uh, 2021 gear video. That's all for me today in the studio. I'm gonna go play with this Fuji GFX 100S. It's tank. <laughs>